Uh, let me just uh, use this tool for some of the simpler things first. Um, and I think that some of the things where we can get a quick mileage, mileage, is that the right term? Out of it is redriving these two formulas that you guys have seen on Tuesday. So with the time dilation, this is what I remember. Um, the, so if you have some clock that's measuring its own time, proper time, then, and its a clock is dipping by you, and you measure the ticking of the clock with your own clock, then the time you measure is gamma times the proper time. And uh, with a ruler, if you have some ruler of its own length, proper length, measured in its own reference frame, then what we derived last time is the, as the ruler is dipping by you, the length you measure is contracted, so it's a shorter. So it's not proper length times gamma, it's proper length, uh, it's uh, proper length divided by gamma. That sounds familiar, yes. We, we derived these two last time from the two postulates of special relativity, uh, more mostly the second postulate, that speed of light is constant at C. And um, what we are going to do now is we are going to use this transformation to redrive these two formulas. And uh, because you know, I'm not, I haven't derived this transformation, I'm just uh, giving it to you. This is something I've memorized. And I want to give you some indication that this is actually correct. And um, I, I'm not sure if I can ever actually derive it from first principles. <laughs> so I'm doing the other thing. I'm using it to derive an expression that if we can get the same thing, then we have some confidence that the thing it came from is probably right. Yeah, this isn't logic class, it's a science class. Uh, I guess uh, this is enough for bit of pieces to derive the time dilation. Um, so let me try to do that. So you know, with time dilation, this is what you're imagining. I have the cart, <laughs> now I have a clock on it, <laughs> and it's going to be moving. Um, so as it goes, so along this CT prime axis, so x prime is equal to zero, but you can count off how many seconds there are. So you know, counting from here, let's say one second, two seconds, uh, too many dots, three seconds, four seconds, and so on. Right? It's counting off seconds that way. So let's say we have, let's define two events. The, so uh, by the way, this is a bit of a term that I should probably define. Um, when someone says event in the context of special relativity, what we mean is um, we are trying to define a space-time coordinate. Space-time coordinate, like, um, like um, t, x, y, z. We call it event rather than just coordinate or point because when you say coordinate or point, a lot of people just think of this, spatial coordinate. When we say event, we are being more clear that we are including this specific time. So this moment here, it can be an event. Like it can be a real event of this crossing zero. Good, so let me call this event A. And let me call a later event, call this, um, let's say, moment at which it measures the time equals four seconds. Let me call this event B. Good. We can describe the coordinate for both of these events. A is kind of boring. The event the coordinate for A is simply, well, um, uh, how do I write this in a way that's uh, not all that confusing. Uh, let me do it this way. Um, so I'm going to skip Y and G. I'm not doing anything with Y and G. Let me just skip writing those. At A, um, the time is equal to zero, X is equal to zero. So time is zero, X is equal to zero. What about in the prime the coordinate? T prime is also equal to zero, right? That's how I'm defining my coordinate system. So T prime is equal to zero. What about X prime? Probably zero, right? Okay, so, all right, so good. Um, so this is my, you know, A is just my origin event. 
Um, so the, this lets me, so I want to in, measure an interval, some kind of difference between events. Putting one of the, the end of the interval at the origin means I can just deal with the coordinate of this, and that will actually mean the difference. So B is the more interesting point. I can describe point B by its uh, x. So let me call this here. Um, oh, let me erase the stationary tape since I'm not doing anything with it. Uh, the boring tape is gone. So I can choose to describe this point B by my x prime. So let me call that x B. Oh, sorry, not prime, just the x B coordinate. And the time, t B coordinate, I can do that. Or I can describe B by the, um, by the, the prime the coordinate. So this would be where, um, well, some kind of t prime B. And do I know what its uh, x prime coordinate is? Uh, it should be orthogonal with the time, time line prime. No, no, no. I'm just asking for at this event B, do you guys know what the x prime, uh, value of the x prime coordinate is? We just went over it. Zero. Yeah, zero. Because it's all along the axis, t prime axis. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. So x prime is, um, I mean, I could x prime b is equal to zero. Okay. Knowing this will make things a little bit easier as we do the next calculation. So this is what we are going to do. This is the general expression. Uh, let me plug in the, so here I guess um, it's actually the value of the primed coordinate that we know. And we are trying to figure out the value of the unprimed coordinate. And from our description of proper time earlier, it's this. That's actually my proper time tau for this clock that's sitting on top of the, uh, that's going to be moving from my reference frame. Okay. So let me plug in this into Lorentz transformation. And my goal really is to try to solve for this time. Because that's going to let me relate the time that I measure in my own reference frame with the time that's being measured by the moving clock. Good? OK. So let me uh, write it down. So I'll just uh, copy. So I'm going to start just ignoring the last two, because that doesn't do anything. I'm getting tired of writing those. So let me just uh, work with these two. So I have C T prime, so T B prime is equal to gamma C T B minus beta xb, um, neither of which I know. And I have x prime, oh, I know that one. That's 0 is equal to gamma uh, x. Oh, I don't know what that is. Let me just write it down as xb minus beta ctb. This is a system of two equations. So I'm hoping. I only have two unknowns. If that's the case, I can do the algebra, solve it. Good. OK, so TB prime, that's the one that I presumably know. I presumably know how many, let's say I know proper time. Let's say I know proper time. Then uh, I don't know the time being measured in my reference frame or the position being measured in my reference frame. Any other unknowns? If you're assuming that the velocity is constant, some value we know, then beta is known. And this is something I want you to get used to, by the way. Beta and gamma actually specify one and the same thing. Because of this relationship here, whenever no, you know beta, you actually know gamma. Whenever you know gamma, you actually know beta. You can actually invert this. The inverse of this is um, beta is equal to, I think it's a square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared or something. Maybe. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. Close enough. <laughs> I'll double check when I actually need it. Um, so, so, yeah, two equations, two unknowns, we can solve it. And I guess uh, looking at it, I don't really care for xb. So let me eliminate xb and just solve for, um, solve for time that way. So I guess it's easier to solve for xb here. I can. Just to cancel out gamma, it's a zero on this side. So dividing by gamma, I get, get rid of gamma. So xb is equal to beta c 
TB. Does this surprise anyone? Position here is equal to velocity beta C times time. But if you were guessing, you would have guessed that, right? Yeah, and, and that is correct. I mean, from the Lorentz <laughs> transformation. It's not giving you anything that's contradictory to your uh, intuition yet. Uh, plug this in here, then this is what you end up with. CTB prime is equal to gamma CTB minus beta squared C um, TB. All right, let me cancel. I think I have C factor on every single term, right? So let me cancel that out. C is gone. Um, I can factor out TB here, so let me do that. I have gamma times 1 minus beta squared times TB. Now, only if I could simplify this further. Can I? What is gamma? This, right? Or 1 minus beta squared raised to power of minus 1 half. Well, I have this, 1 minus beta squared raised to power of 1. So I can actually combine these two to get me um, 1 minus beta squared raised to power of 1 half. Or I guess the gamma is the uh, expression we actually prefer most of the time. So this is equal to 1 over gamma. Okay. So with all that algebra, this is what we end up with. Um, so TB prime is equal to TB over gamma. Hey, is gamma on the wrong side? Oh, we are okay, because it's not the TB that's the proper time. It's this that's the proper time, right? So rearranging things so that I have proper time on the correct side. What we have is TB, which is the time we are measuring in the lab frame. We are not measuring the proper time for this clock because the clock is moving from my frame. So TB, time I measure in lab frame, is equal to gamma times the proper time, uh, or I guess TB prime. This is the proper time tau. Good. That's what we are expecting to see. That's what we get.